Hi there, welcome back. Uh, a few, I'm guessing it was over two years ago now, a friend of mine was selling off a lot of her patterns. I don't know why, because I'm the one that hoards patterns. So, I don't know. <laughs> but, and I fell hard for this coat. It's like, it's the dream coat. It's the coat of my dreams. And um, I have been putting off making it for, well, two years. Because um, I haven't felt like I've had the skill. But um, I really wanted a new coat for winter because I've been wearing um, a, a... Well, it says coat on that pattern as well. I have started by making a mock-up because that is what we need to do. Okay, so here's the mock-up. So the first thing that I noticed is that it's a tad too small. Like, not extremely. But I feel like, um, like th this seam is supposed to go a bit longer out here. This panel should be a bit wider. And then there's this weird thing happening here, but that might just be the dress form. So I'll put it on myself afterwards so we can see. to make a strip that is this wide and just open the seam and put that in there and call it a day but that's not what we're going to do because we are better than that okay so I have no idea what I'm doing at the moment so I made the husband I put this on and I made the husband um, draw a line along where the uh, side seam of my t-shirt is, was, um, and because I want the side seam to be, well, centered in the side. Does that make sense? I think so. So we need this seam to be, like be moved over here. I could just put this curve into this panel, but that would not be the way that I want it to be, and that's bad. I'm going to be putting this this much in here somewhere I think which means that I need to rip this panel and this panel out uh, and cut a new one that is slightly wider so I was hoping that I didn't have to do that but I do okay so last night when I realized that this collar have to be draped and not just modified i was i was like no that's not happening tonight we need the collar to come around here and go like this all the way around to the middle and it need to have like a tiny bit of a stand here so that's what we're going to uh, drape i like draping i'm just not entirely sure how to drape this is exact thing so because it needs to like bend around, uh, so we'll see. I have attached a collar. And by with that, I think that my mock-up is actually sort of finished, kind of sort of finished. Um, of course, I haven't practiced the welt pocket things. Uh, I made welt pocket pockets once, and that was not that much of a success. So I might practice some before I. Uh, 
actually do it on the coat. I've been thinking about trimmings. Um, the trimmings on the original is nice and I was just, they are nice, but I, uh, I'm not entirely sure what I feel about them. Um, but then I was thinking about this coat. I'm going to use it during the months in which this country is just dark. Uh, or at least if you go outside before like 9 in the morning or after like 4 in the afternoon, it will be dark and you will need some kind of reflective on your clothing to make sure that cars don't run you over. Uh, so I was thinking about that. I drove somewhere the other day and I was thinking about it and I realized that I have some, uh, they call it reflective yarn, but it's not yarn, it's string. Um, and you're supposed to um, layer this piece of reflective yarn with some actual yarn and make stuff out of that that will be reflective. The husband has a hat um, that has uh, reflectiveness in the whites of the pattern and that is, is it's, uh, it's a great it's great. Uh, so I was thinking that I may just make that trimming with like as a chain of double crochet or something with black and that reflectives so that you know because <laughs> Like, normal reflectives are ugly. I'm officially in hell. So I have tried two, two times. Uh, and I'm thinking that welt pockets in themselves would be way easier if I just didn't think too hard about it. I don't know what it is. But it might be that this pattern tells you to do it harder than it has to be. That might be a problem. Or that might be a problem. Um, because here's the thing. If I could have just done the welt and then sewn the pocket and the flap on afterwards, I think that would be way easier. Uh, also, I wouldn't get this weird kind of so here we got like this is the actual outer fabric this is the welt and this here is the flap and I don't like this this just the thing um so I am wondering if there are other easier ways to do this that actually don't end up doing this because also over here that's just it just feels wrong so I am thinking in theory this isn't that hard which is why I'm wondering why it's so hard but I was going to show you the fabrics so this awesome uh, wool tweed fabric is my outer fabric uh, it is wool. It's heavy. I love it. Um, it is black and gray and it has this small spots of other colors, which I definitely love. Um, just look at it. It is beautiful. So that's that. For lining, I got this off of Spoon Flower. I could not resist it. It is awesome. I need to have fun patterns and fun linings in my life. So this is that. This is a uh, cotton, organic cotton sateen. Um, and the design is by Alison Romero. I think that if I can find it again, which I probably can, uh, I'll link the thing down there. And last but not least, I have this horsehair canvas that I'm going to do, uh, that I'm going to make the um, 
interlining out of. And now I have to cut and that is going to take all day. So uh, join me downstairs. I was supposed to start sewing, like actual sewing today, but that didn't happen. I'm scared, okay? <laughs> I just don't know where to start. Like, do I start by sewing or do I start by, by doing the past stitching or which end do I start? So after basically having ruined my finger pad stitching, this is what we're... What we've got. So this is the back collar with a nice stand. But I have got to find a way to pad stitch uh, that doesn't ruin my finger because I am going to do a lot of, of pad stitching in this project and uh, let's just say I, I dislike having my finger like that. Uh, it hurts and uh, it doesn't look good. I'm thinking like having some kind of dowel or maybe, ooh, look at that. The answer might be right in front of my nose. I have these 12 millimeters, 12 millimeter knitting needles just standing there in my window because they don't fit in my knitting needle box but like this is kind of the same size as my finger maybe I can use this instead of the finger to roll over to roll the fabric over while I pad stitch I have tried watching a lot of different videos on subject of pad stitching and general jacket making and um, I gotta say the rolling over the finger thing works way better than having it draped over your thigh thing uh, mostly because when I have it draped over my thigh I'm always like terrified of accidentally sewing it into my skirt so that's a problem, uh, but this will probably work fine. I'm thinking today I will um, just sew up the back of the jacket because of the coat, because that's there's nothing nothing hard or weird or anything about the back of the jacket. So that's what I'm going to do today. And then I might do some more pad stitching, I don't know, uh, just kind of maybe. <laughs> having wondered and thought and researched and maybe even pondering um, I have decided on a game plan first of all the fronts are going to be totally interlined with the horsehair canvas and I 
was actually checking if I had more uh, scraps of horse hair. Um, I don't. I should have bought like twice as much as I did, but I uh, hadn't hadn't accounted for the fact that the horse hair is uh, not as wide as um, the normal fabrics that I normally buy. That is probably a really big rookie mistake. But I have decided on doing something that I am doing like based on a lot of videos that I watched and also another pattern that I have from Black Snails. Based on it all, um, I decided that the fronts are going to be totally interlined with the horse hair and uh, the rest of the pieces are going to be uh, interlined with some of the coutille that I had lying around from uh, when I made my corset. It's going to be interlined like in the topmost uh, part of the coat because that's where you need it to be stronger. And right now, now I'm working on uh, what one of the tailors I watched a video from um, called a ter permanent basting stitches um, which looks like this. You just baste the baste down the horse hair canvas or the interlining to the fabric with like these with these long stitches um, that are just she called it a bite um, and they won't show up on the front because you try to just use try to take just a minuscule piece of the fabric when you're going through there hopefully just catching like a few fibers um, and we're going to have these basting stitches first of all I made one that's just the lapel and then we got one that goes from here all the way to the uh, bottom and then we're going to have one that goes uh, at the waistline here and um, and then on the others, the other uh, pieces, we're going to have one that goes around the arm side and uh, or just over the top of the back. So what I have done now is I have pad stitched this lapel uh, and well I started out wanting to instead of using my finger use like this big knitting needle that I had lying around uh, and that did not work as well as I'd hoped so I had to undo all of the things and do it again destroying my finger in the process again um, and then I have pressed it because that's what you're supposed to do apparently. Um, I've done that with two now and honestly I tried not to press the horse hair too much because using the steam on the horse hair that just smells bad. It smells bad. But initially I thought that the welt pockets would be the hardest part of this thing and I still feel like that's going to be hard but after having watched like I, I don't know I have watched so many videos while making this thing I decided <laughs> I decided that uh, the way that wealth pockets are made in the pattern of this is is way harder than one of the videos I found so because um, mm, so the way that it's made up in the pattern as you make have two like welts thingies <laughs> that you put on the outside and then you cut a slit into the 
fabric that you've worked so hard on uh, and then you flip it inside out and then you attach the pocket bag on the inside and I have done that once and it is it's just really hard because you I don't know how to explain this but it's just it's hard to make that uh, so I saw a video in which they do basically this if you can even see it um, you make like a patch uh, and you mark the pocket slit that you're making and then you just slam it on uh, where you want the pocket to be and then you sew around and then you make the slit with a uh, they call it ducktails. I don't know why. Um, little uh, triangles in the corners here, and then you flip the entire thing inside out. And I feel like that will make the the hole for the pocket uh, more. It will look neater. But I am having major uh, cutting anxiety because now I need to cut through all the layers in here which means that if this goes wrong I need to make a new one of the I need I need to make this entirely from scratch from scratch once again which means I need to do all the pad stitching of the lapels of the lapel once more and I I don't want to do that so just uh like pray for me or something I, I still don't want to do this, but I am doing it. jacket yeah so this needs to be pressed but I do believe that once pressed this hole will look neat I hope um, so let's just here's to hoping well, let's look at this. It's actually a hole that's not going to unravel anytime soon. And now I'm wondering if this needs a top stitch line right there. So I have pockets! And it's kind of a big and nice pocket as well. And look at that nothing well the inside is pretty messy but it's going to be fine and I ended up doing a lot of this by hand because I don't know I didn't feel like trying to shove this thick piece these thick pieces into the machine um, I just felt like I had more control doing it by hand and I'm just procrastinating actually starting the sewing because this was a hard process but we'll see 
it's going to be fine, right? Yeah, it'll be fine. I'm fine. You're fine. We're all fine, right? Looking good, actually. This looks better than the first side. Yay. Yay me. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Doing it. And I'm scared. So something very weird happened. I uh, have now now sewed. Uh, I did the shoulder seams and the side seams, and then I tried it on. And you know, this is where the where I have planned the lapel to have the fold, which does not look good. Uh, and I was confused for a while. And then I decided to just uh, baste the color on to the thing, just to see how it will look. And as you can see, this looks wrong. Um, so I put it on and I've been trying to like see where these lapels should go. And I mean, I over here this feels right, but then this right here that is way too big so maybe <laughs> now I'm looking at it in the viewfinder instead of let me just get some pins to close this thing just so that we can see the feel of the result so we can see now uh, I, I, first of all this collar should come down to here so I need to see if I have enough horse hair to make a new collar and do all of the pad stitching on that. That took forever, so yay for that. Uh, other than that, the I have no idea how this could have uh, escaped me while working on the mock-up. Now look at, let, so that's the collar. I will try, I kind of want them to go I'm just looking at it in the viewfinder because that's that feels like the right thing to do. Um, this line feels right. This feels wrong, and this, especially if we if we keep it like this, this is totally wrong. Um, maybe if we do this, just to get this. These lines are the ones that are wrong. If this line could go from here up to about here, let's fold that. I need to drape this on myself because how else am I going to do it? So that's look like a that looks like a better lapel, right? Yeah. And of course, I need to iron this back out and redo all of the pad stitching. Now having the entire, I, I don't want to, I do not want to pick up a single seam if I don't have to. Um, and then the collar goes, it only comes in here. And I wish it would come in maybe here, which means that I need the collar to be way bigger than it is. Like this much. I have no idea. How did this happen during the making of the mock-up? It's... I am very, very confused. I decided to try something now that I'm obviously totally lost anyway. Uh, when I watched the video on pad stitching at um, Foundations Reeled, um, I one of the lecturers uh, was talking about how they sometimes in fashion houses in Italy used to just use a strip of fabric and then shape that using um, using pen stitching and I thought hey uh, that sounds like a good idea basically uh, and uh, so this is what I did I made a strip, cut on the bias, um, and stitched together in the back like this. So this 
this piece here is just a wide strip of fabric that is square in the ends on each side. Uh, it's square and this piece uh, this piece is cut on the bias and this piece is cut on the bias and then just uh, stitched together in the middle. Uh, and then I have... So it's just stitched to the neckline of the front here. Um, down to, you know, I said that I kind of wanted the uh, color to end here at the this point of the lapel earlier. Um, so I just stitched it on and then drew on where I want the line to go and this is where the line I want the line to go and this is the seam allowance cut into it um so I'm going to take out the basting cut this down to where I've decided it should go um and baste it back and then if that still looks good I hope it still looks good because I don't have all that much uh, fabric left so yay for that um, but as you can see here this is just a there it's uh, it's got square uh, corners and this is kind of a square corner right this is not I am confident that I can shape this to my liking using pad stitching because uh, well honestly it feels like I've had some practice now um, and then of course these lapels need to be, I need to pick, pick these pad stitching out and cut this piece down to make this look the way that I want it to. You know the circle of, uh, creative projects in which you start out with, yay, new project, this is awesome, this is going to be awesome, and then this is hard, this is crap. This is even harder. I'm just almost finished. Hey, this is kind of nice. This is awesome, you know, and then the circle continues with every new project. I think this I'm um, in somewhere in between this is hard and this sucks. So, um I guess we'll um I guess we'll see where this goes. My left in index finger. Now that I have made all of the bad stitching twice or in some cases even three times. My index finger feels like the skin is about to... It Yesterday it hurt. It feels somewhere in between just dry and calloused. And uh, just generally sore. So I'm going to do this by hand. And I realized that since the front of the thing is fraying quite a lot. I decided not to take this downstairs with me and do the hand sewing while watching some, I don't know, Star Trek Discovery is my jam these days. Um, so I decided not to do that. Um, just sit here in silence and hand sew. Okay, so the facing of the front of the coat is uh, in at least and now I have to press it and I really don't want to press this lapel it's um I just don't want to but I kind of have to to make the edge look nice um, but I don't wanna because I already I, I want to show you the crease so what I did was when I had this up without the facing on the dress form, I went over it and didn't really press, but I steamed uh, the entire thing uh, with my iron, um, just like so that it would have this soft kind of crease um, on the underside of the lapel because. Uh, yeah, you cannot see this crease. There it is, this crease. Um, just to like over exaggerate what I did with the pad stitching. And now I have to put my iron down here 
and go down here and I just don't want to do that but I kind of have to because otherwise you'll this will not look good the front of the entire thing will just not look good and I need it to look good um, so yeah so we're on to the hem and for that I needed a helper say hi husband hi husband <laughs> um, so do you know what a hem is? hem? yeah uh, the, oh, that that's the uh, the word that you use when you with you de, <coughs> so, like that. <laughs> it's the bottom of anything, really. Your pants has a hem. So it's this, this that thing? seam right there. Yes. That seam. That's the hem. That's the hem. And now we're going to fold the that fold the hem on this jacket or uh, coat. Okay. So I'm going to wear it. And then you're going to fold it up inside so that the raw edge is in, on the inside. Okay. And put a pin and put pins in it so that it stays up. And it needs to be folded up the same amount at all sides? Yeah, I need it to be so that you can see. So that you can see that uh, maroon colored line up at the bottom of my skirt. Okay. That's about a centimeter higher up than the skirt. Okay. Because this skirt is made at a length that is just long enough that I won't trip over myself when walking up a set of stairs. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to put this on, hold this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this on. Wow, it's gotten heavy. Okay, so uh, I'm afraid you'll have to lie on the floor to do this. Okay, if I must. <laughs> you must. Welcome to the floor. Uh, I have been like, oh no, this is wrong. Hang on. Uh, working on the hem again, and I gotta say, um, the husband's frustrations about working on the hem is, it's um, valid because this, it's not easy. It's really hard and he doesn't sew at all. So it's uh, not weird that he was frustrated. Sew the hem. I decided that the front of the coat needs to be the height that the husband put it in because that's that's the most important. That's where I walk upstairs and everything. But I decided that the back could be a tad longer just because that would look nice. And also, I decided to close these vents. Okay, so one thing that I want to say about... And what are you doing? I just asked... Sewing. Ah. Uh. And also vlogging. <laughs> but this is not interesting for you. Do you like this fabric? I love this fabric. It's hot. That because bit. I just ironed it. Mm. And also the... Just the feel of it and the pattern. Yeah, I like it. You like the pattern? It's like your style. Because My style. Like, because you sew and stuff like that. That was 
what I was going for, so that's nice. Could I talk to the camera about what I was supposed to talk to the camera about now? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so what I was going to say is that this fabric is from Spoonflower and it is um, patterned and printed on over the entire thing. You know, it's actually, they take white cotton and then they print on that. Of course they do that. That's how printing works. Um, but it feels like the coloring, the printing that they use for coloring, the ink, I'm just going to call it ink. It's probably not ink because it doesn't bleed, but <laughs> I'm just going to call it ink. Wait, it's ink bleed? Anyway, uh, it doesn't bleed, so it's probably not ink, but I'm just going to call it ink because I don't know what they use. Uh, but it's hard to iron on, and I don't know why, because it's... But it's like, on the printed side, uh, the iron kind of has more resistance. It doesn't glide as well over the printed side. On the other side, on the non-printed side, it goes wonderfully and then when you're pressing out seams that that's just weird i finally have a lining which is great because well that means that i am close to finished with this project which is good because i'm kind of tired of it like just getting all these tiny, tiny stitches, getting to do them. It's, uh, working by hand is nice. I have, uh, only the hem left, but of course that is a very long hem. So I want buttonholes. And buttons and I bought these buttons they are big but it feels like they fit the bigness of the coat so and I decided to do the buttonholes by hand because I kind of I like that look better it, it looks nicer than doing it by machine it certainly is a lot slower than doing it by machine, but um, it's okay. Also, my machine is kind of occupied at the moment. Uh, I'm helping my sister-in-law um, sew a uniform of sorts. Uh, but yeah, okay, so uh, back to my coat. <laughs> um, so I made three buttonholes already. And I really like the way that they look. It's uh, it's very nice and discreet. And also, I'm kind of more confident that these will hold than with the uh, machine buttonhole thing. So I'm just going to do the last buttonhole. Um, and... Uh, and then, when I've done the buttonholes, I can sew the buttons on, and then the coat will be, for all intents and purposes, it will be done. I have an idea for some trimmings. Uh, I, I'll probably start on that, like, today or later today, but it's going to take some time, so I'm just going to start wearing the coat. This is the yarn that I've decided to use for the... Uh, trimmings of my coat. Um, it is a Viking of Norway yarn called Reflex, which is basically a it's a three ply yarn, uh, wool yarn uh, that has this added strand of a reflective band substance thing that will reflect light back at, uh, you know, cars. It's hard to, I guess it's really hard to catch on camera. Traditional reflectives are ugly. You have these bands that you can, that looks like a snap bracelet uh, that has the reflective substance on the top. 
uh, or you got like vests that are bright yellow and so some yarn companies decided that it's way cooler if we make something like this and uh, I gotta say I agree. I'm making a band of uh, double crochets. I need to find a crochet hook. Hang on. This right here is my very favorite crochet hook. It has the 9mm on one end and the 10mm on the other and it's pretty. <laughs> so uh, for this yarn I have gone down a size than what is uh, instructed on the label. Uh, this says three and a half millimeter millimeter slash a US four, and I went down to two and a half millimeters just because I felt like that was uh, it. I'm not sure how to like explain this. I just felt like the two and a half millimeter made the double crochets tighter and that was what I was looking for. So I'm going to show you the way that I make this band of double crochets. So normally when uh, doing a chain of double crochets you'd have to make a long chain of slip stitches um, first and then go back and do all the double crochets into that uh, and that would well that is a nice way to do it uh, it's certainly a normal thing to do it is also restricting because you will only be able to make a chain that is the same length as your first chain of slip stitches so what I've learned to do is um, I don't think everyone knows this, so I'm just going to go through it with this yarn that is it has more shadows in it than the black um, So you start with a slip knot and then you do two Slip stitches and then you start the double crochet by going all yarn over and then you go down into the slip stitch Like so and then you now normally you would pull you pull the yarn through and then you would do the double crochet right like so um, and if you keep doing that you'll after a while you'll get like a circle and that would certainly sometimes that's what you want a circle or a, like I don't know what to call this it is not a chain of double crochets it will as long as you keep going into this you will get you will meet yourself in the end so here's what I have learned to learned to do let's see so we start off with two chains a chain of two slip stitches you go into the first knot get the yarn through and I like to like fasten this a little bit after that and then instead of just doing the instead of just doing the double crochet you do this extra step first you take the yarn through just the first and then you do the double crochet and Next time you'll go into this stitch and you pull the yarn through and you pull the yarn through that again and then you do the double crochet like this. Oh and this What this does is it makes a chain at the same time as it, ma it makes the chain that you would usually uh, do your double crochets into while you're doing the double crochets I guess and um, that allows you to make a band or a strip of double crochets instead of having to do a 
long piece of slip stitches first. So yeah, I am insanely happy about this. It's uh it's kind of like I've had these few days I've had this real want to go outside just so that I can wear my new coat, which is I don't know, it's kind of weird to me that that is the thing that happened. This has been one of my more ambitious projects uh, ever and the fact that I actually made it work and uh, got it finished in the end is actually one of my... I just... something good had to happen in 2020, right? Yeah. I'm not sure if I... I'm just delirious or if it's actually kind of rather good. I really like how when I'm outside and you take pictures of me uh, using a flash that uh, it the reflectives just lights up. That is probably one of my favorite features of this coat. <laughs> I've been putting off doing the reveal footage uh, because I kind of I wanted it to be We've had like rain for 24-7 for a few weeks now and that's not the time to shoot outside uh, uh, outside reveal <laughs> footage. That is just not... Nope, you don't do that. Um, so uh, I've been putting it off because I wanted the perfect weather. I wanted... I, actually, I, I don't really like snow that much. Um, I know, shocking. Uh, and I, but I kind of wanted there to be like 30 centimeters of snow and um, blue sky, sunlight, just you know the perfect icy cold winter day. I wanted that for my uh, for my uh, reveal shots, but that I'm not. I'm just not sure if that's going to happen anytime soon. Uh, it's, uh, well, that's not true. Christmas Day was kind of like that. But, like, I did not do that on Christmas Day. Anyway, uh, Happy New Year. Um, I hope your 2021 is better than your 2020. But anyway, I'm Anne, and this has been my approach.